once again, guys, can we just appreciate Pretzel Rocks? These guys know how to do some awesome music, and it's royalty free, so I won't get uh, muted in my VOD, which is great. These guys, oh. I, I, I do truly appreciate what Pretzel Rocks does. So, hey there. How's it going? If you uh, can't tell, <laughs> thanks Vixen, if you can't tell by the name of the stream, and you can't tell by the shirt I'm wearing, it's challenge day. We are going to be unboxing today the Umbaku wave of Marvel Legends action figures. Now... <clears throat> Previous Marvel Legends waves we've seen have consisted of... Oh, thank you so much for the host, Retro. Previous waves that we've seen have consisted of partially comic book and partially MCU figures, uh, or just all comic book figures. This one is the first ever all MCU wave. So, and actually it's the only one I know of coming up. Because even the Captain Marvel wave is got a couple of comic book guys in it. Mostly MCU, but there's a couple of comic book guys in there too. So, without further ado, let's do further. So, since we have a whole line of Marvel Legends MCU Black Panther wave figures to go through today, I figure let's go with the bad guys first. So who doesn't love themselves a good villain? You won't sell Dal One without a bad guy. Every G.I. Joe needs a Cobra. So, our first figure we are unboxing is the Wave's definite true villain from the movie. Ulysses Claw. Now, this is the first time we've seen a Ulysses Claw figure uh, he has been in two MCU movies previously. Uh, he was featured in Age of Ultron, where he lost his arm over here. And in Black Panther, where he was now the new main villain with the cool new arm over here. So, let's dive into what we've got. As you can see, we've got the torso here of Umbaku. We've got the figure here of Ulysses Claw an extra non-laser cannon arm, and a gun. Uh, now, he does look a little misproportioned. If you look at him, his top half looks a lot bigger than his bottom half. I'll show you why when we open him up. As per usual, we've got the window pane on the front showing you all of the contents. On the back, we've got a press shot, in this case, not even of the figure, but actually of Andy Serkis, and the remainder of the wave. Now, I'm really happy that we got a figure of Ulysses Claw in this form. Not just because I really like... I really like the MCU figures. I do. I'll be honest. I really am a fan of the MCU. But, additionally, I really like that uh, we got a figure of <clears throat> Andy Serkis looking like Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis has gotten figures before for his many movie roles, but as Gollum as Caesar from Planet of the Apes, um, he hasn't gotten one that's got his face until now. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, the back, I'm pretty sure that it's the back for all of these, is just the Black Panther symbol. Uh, they've actually gone to... I made comment last week while doing an unboxing of the new unusual style of that PS4 Spider-Man figure and how the clamshell was part of the case. Well, it seems like that's the way they're going from now on, and I kind of like that. It's kind of nice. Oh, I will say this Umbaku piece is sturdy. It is a big fella, and I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> but as per usual... As we go through the separate figures in the wave, we'll take out their build-to-figure pieces, and our last review of the day will, as always, be the build-to-figure himself.
Hmm, now that's something to be a little bit cautious of. If you guys out there get this figure for yourself, um, be cautious when taking him out of the packaging, as the laser cannon arm is not one piece, and it's made of a very soft material. So you don't want to go ripping up that laser cannon arm that looks just so cool. So, here we have Ulysses Claw. Live and in color, in plastic, however you want to go with it. Um, starting right off the bat, I love the look of the character. They got the likeness pretty much 100% for Andy Serkis. I don't know if you guys can see. Just, and of course you can't because the lighting's a little bit too good today and the figure's got way too much white on him. Um, I'll show you in some pictures. I'm going to post up to my Twitter later on because uh, I want to do some comparison shots from some other... We'll show you during the review what I'm talking about. Um... But he has, he has a distinct likeness of Andy Serkis, and I kind of love it. Now, I originally thought this was going to be on the, <laughs> too much white. I originally thought this was going to be on the suit wave, or uh, the suit body that we've seen with previous uh, figures for Marvel Legends, uh, such as the Everett Ross figure as we saw last week. Uh, however, it's actually a very different sculpt, and I'm really happy they did that. Uh, more plain clothes sculpts. But, I mentioned to you that it was a little bit top-heavy looking. That his upper torso is a little bit too big for his lower half. There's a reason behind that. And that is, his vest here with the tie and the undone collar isn't actually a permanent piece. that in a very short amount of time by unfastening two pegs and removing the head which thankfully all Marvel Legends are now able to do we can get a little bit more size appropriate without the vest. Uh, this is more accurate for his interrogation scene from Black Panther, if, of course, you've seen the movie, which I'm assuming if you guys are here, you've probably seen the movie. Uh, the vest is all rubber soft goods. Um, it's just one big piece it looks all right, but honestly, it's not sculpted as much as I'd personally prefer it to be. <clears throat> uh, this is also how he looks in his final scene in the movie. So, I mean, there's that for you. Uh, getting into what we always get into here, how's the articulation on him? For his head articulation, he can actually look down really well and can look up as well as I'd prefer him to. I mean, that's actually some great articulation for his arms. He's better than 90 degrees, which is something we can't say with most legends. Um, mine is a little bit wobbly in his ab crunch here. I'll say that. You could probably see him uh, wobbling back and forth there. Um... Uh, but it's a nice, unique new mold, and I still love it. Uh, we've got one old demon coming back to us, though, Hasbro. Single jointed L. Oh. Oh. Hasbro. That's all? That's not even 90 degrees, guys. You gotta get him that flex in there. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. 
I mean, granted, he's not going to be the most acrobatic character, but still, you got to do something. Uh, additionally, another point to mention is, with his blaster arm here, as I mentioned previously, it's all soft goods, so the hands start to separate away from the blasters. Uh, you want to be careful with it. Even though it's got a really nice sculpt to the blaster, um, you still want to be careful while handling it so that you don't wreck it up. Um, of course, it doesn't have any articulation besides an elbow bend, which can only... Ugh, Again, not even get to 90 degrees, but at least there's a blaster there to make that the case. Uh, however, since it is a piece that can be replaced, we do have his normal arm. So we can see him with just the arm prior to it getting cut off. If you're looking for him to go with a MCU Ultron, uh, which of course is available now. Or if you're trying to get him in a non-powered up pose uh this will work as well conversely if you want to just forego both of them and go with the interrogation scene there you go he's been left disarmed anyway moving on uh we do have wrist articulation but weirdly enough he doesn't have the in-and-out wrist articulation of someone that they have with a gun. Uh, he has the up-and-down of a sword wielder. Uh, it's a little bit unique to me. I would have really expected him to have the up-and-down, uh, not the side-to-side. -side. Uh, <laughs> I will say, some of the details on this absolutely blow me away. I don't know if you guys can see it, but he has his full tribal tattoo going all down his arm here. Uh, he actually has the wristband that he wears around his wrist here. He even has his pinky ring. He's got a pinky ring. I mean, that's some detail. That's some close attention. Am I going to say it makes up for his articulation downfalls? Well... I'm never going to say no to more articulation. That being said, though, it does go a great deal of distance towards making me not hate the figure. And making me actually like it more and more. Uh, he does, of course, hold the gun. Alright, um, the trigger is a little bit forward on the mold that they used for his gun. So he can't quite get his finger all the way in around the trigger on it, but it still looks alright. Uh, unlike most suited figures, he does have an ab crunch. And he can go decently far back and... Decently far forward. Uh, he, of course, also has a hip cut. And... For his hips, they're... They're okay. It's not the best hip articulation that we've seen, but it's okay. Uh, he does have the upper thigh cut here. Now, what's weird is, in this light, his pants look so bright blue. Uh, they're actually a very dark navy. That's lighting for you. Um, he has the double-jointed knees, and he can go back a decent degree. He can't go back all the way, but I'm almost willing to forgive it for just how unique the sculpt is. I believe the lower half is a reuse of the Chameleon slash Ross mold, but, um, and the soon-to-be-reviewed here on this channel, uh, Nick Fury from the Captain Marvel wave. Uh, I'm pretty sure the pants are the exact same, they're just a reuse, but the upper body is new, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. it it's very nice for this particular character. For his feet, he does have rocker ankles? Does he? He does. They're a little bit stiff, but he does indeed have rocker ankles. Uh, you can't get the most articulation out of them, but they are indeed there. Um, likewise, his foot can only go that far forward and that far back. We're looking at the same limitations that we saw 
with Everett Ross's feet uh, because of the cuffs on the bottom of the pants. All in all, it's a solid figure. If you want a figure of Andy Circus, here you go. Uh, mm-hmm. I always kind of like having a figure of the face behind so many things and not just the characters that they're involved with. Uh, well, yes, I've got a Gollum figure. I don't actually think I've got any of Caesar. But I I do like actually having Andy Circus in the flesh on my shelf. And I'm just noticing now a little minor detail that I didn't notice before. Uh, to go along with his fade haircut here, which looks actually really good on the figure. They actually have the tattoos on the back of his head going along the back of his head to the side of his head. It's a minor detail, but it's a really nice minor detail. I think they did a great job with this figure. I have zero complaints. I'm I'm very happy with it. I do wish they did a little bit more with the articulation. But I'm not going to tell you guys not to get the figure because it lacks some articulation. Um, It is a wonderful likeness of the character. Personally, when I display him, I don't think I'm going to have uh, the vest on him. Well, the vest is a nice piece. It bulks up his upper half way too much for me. uh, And just makes it a little bit unwieldy as far as being a very top-heavy figure. That being said, otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this figure. So, since we've already gotten the definite true bad guy of Black Panther out of the way, let's move on to one of the most requested Marvel Legends from the Black Panther movie. He isn't top-heavy, but he looks top-heavy because of that extra vest piece. It just puffs out his chest too much, makes his feet look um, very small. He's not actually top-heavy, but he looks a little disproportioned. So as I was saying, moving on to the actual villain of Black Panther, we have one of the most requested outfits, the Tactical Killmonger outfit. The Vegeta outfit, Uh, because he out and out said that's what he was inspired by, was Vegeta from DBZ. As per usual, we have the window pane on the front. In this case, we are seeing a rather impressive looking gun, and I'm really happy that they went with realistic looking guns and not some weird cyber sci-fi stuff like they've been doing with some of their newer figures. Uh, Another handgun. The tribal mask that he gets from the museum because I'm feeling it. The head of Umbaku, the weaponed club of Umbaku, and of course the Killmonger figure himself. And on the back, once again, we have a press picture, but it's not of an action figure. It's not a real life picture. It looks to be an artist's rendition of the real life actor. Which is a little weird, but alright. I'm feeling it. As I said with Claw, all of these seem to have the same background. Inside, ooh. Ooh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I really like the look of this figure. I'm really liking the look of this figure. I'm not liking those sharp, pointy spines on the mask that just jab me in the finger. Uh, It's all good. I promise, I'm only bleeding on the inside. Uh, We, of course, have the Umbaku Head and the Umbaku Club. Um, I'll go more into the review of this club later on. It just feels a little... Eh. Ah, 
well, that's good to know. As I was trying to take it out, the uh, utility belt of his came off. Which is, all right, uh, might even help us with some of his articulation later on. Um, it's got some nice sculpted things on here. The grenades, uh, sculpted Hulkster, uh, three extra clips here, and a sculpted knife. That being said, the one thing I cannot stand when they make Marvel Legends... If you're going to sculpt a Hulkster, make it a functional Hulkster. Make it so I can use it. Put, Let me put his actual gun in there. Otherwise, I've got a handgun in his hand and another one on his hip. Why? Who's, who's walking around with two handguns? Who, I ask you? Who? That's not the Punisher. But it's good to know that, that comes off. I will say I am once again kind of loving some of the details of this figure, and I'll get into them in just a moment here. But they've done some really good things here. Now, I think of note. Oh. Huh. That's unusual. We've got, still from last week on our Fantastic Four figure for our fan four stick, Johnny Storm, our previous Michael B. Jordan head. Our new Michael B. Jordan head looks very similar, but it actually looks a little bit different, a little bit cleaner. Um, they've got better definition on the eyes, on his eyebrows, even on his beard. Um, the sculpt seems to be the same. But they've really defined some of the extra features on here. Made him look really good. I'm not sure if it's pop your retainer, pop your brace is good, but it's pretty good. Anyway. Uh, a secondary thing to mention is most of the time when we get masks like this, it's going to be an entire extra head where you just remove the previous head and pop on the one with the mask. Uh, that's not the case here. You can actually see through the eyes and tell that it's just a mask. Which just kind of sets on Killmonger's face. Um, I mean, it looks really good on his face, I'm not gonna lie. The mask looks appropriate for the movie. I'm really happy with the look of it. Not that I'm gonna display him with the mask on... I'll probably display him with the mask in hand, if anything. Uh, there's a lot of new molding on this figure, and I'm kind of loving that. Uh, this utility belt piece is new molding. His tactical armor here is new molding. I believe the pants are a reuse of the Punisher from the Netflix wave. Uh, even this extra strap of two more clips of ammo is new. I'm not sure, but I think even his arms are a new sculpt here. Because uh, they don't just look like your standard superhero arms. They actually have wrinkles to the fabric along them. So I'm I'm pretty impressed with the figure. Holding it in hand, it feels really good. It looks, it looks fantastic. But, getting into what we usually do here, let's examine our articulation. For the head... He can look down on people pretty well, and he can actually look up really well as well. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm probably going to use this unmasked head on my normal Killmonger Golden Leopard outfit just because it looks so good for any time I want him to be unmasked, that is. For his arm articulation. Alright, Hasbro. You're starting to do right. We're getting a little bit over 90 degrees here. A little bit less than 90 degrees on the left arm. Not sure why, but... I mean, it's, it's 90 degrees. It's just a little bit less than his right arm. That's alright. 
Uh, another interesting thing is, if you guys notice, he's wearing a wristwatch. Uh, now, that's actually a reuse of the wristwatch that we saw last on Luke Cage from the Netflix 2-pack with Claire... Why can I not remember? Temple's figure. <laughs> I couldn't remember Claire's last name for a second there. Uh, so that's a nice reuse of that wristwatch. Kudos to you, Hasbro. You guys are getting details down really well. We, of course, have the bicep cut there. He does have double-jointed elbows. And even though he is pretty darn swole, he can still go back pretty far. Now, if he's at 90 degrees, mm, we're, only, we're only going to here. But because that shoulder goes that little bit of extra distance... He can actually get all the way behind his head. That's impressive. That's that's fairly impressive. Uh, we do have, of course, wrist articulation. Uh, the standard wrist cut and the in and out wrist hinge. Uh, it really confuses me as to Hasbro's choices with that, where they will put a up and down wrist hinge on... Someone like Ulysses Claw, but only put the in and out articulation on someone like Killmonger. Uh, although I will give them credit here. He does have enough articulation to be able to two-hand his rifle. That might not seem like a big thing to some people, uh, depending on what lines you collect, but... I know for me, with this figure, I'm probably going to be having him hold that rifle two-handed. I'm not sure if I'm going to have him put it up to his shoulder. Probably not. But it's nice to still have him be able to two-hand that M4? Are we an M4 or an M16? I know we've got an underbarrel. That's obvious. but And, of course, extra optics set on the end. But whatever. Uh... We're not here to talk about firearms, we're here to talk about action figures. Now, he does have an ab crunch, really? I thought that he did not. Color me impressed once again. Uh, he can go a decent ways forward and pretty far back. Uh, he's not bending over backwards for you ladies, I'm sorry to tell you. But he can go a decent ways back. That's fairly impressive. Uh, another nice thing is... It shouldn't need to be a feature. It should just be a given. He's a figure that uses handguns that actually has trigger fingers. You don't know how many times Hasbro has messed that one up. Where they've given us a gun-wielding hero, anti-hero, or villain... And not given them trigger fingers. But he can actually wield both guns very well. Uh, he does have the waist cut. And even with the belt on, he can use that waist cut pretty well. For his hip articulation. Music got really epic when I'm starting to do this hip articulation. Anyway... He actually has really good hip articulation. I'm really impressed. He, of course, has the upper thigh cut. The double-jointed knees. Which can actually go back further than Ulysses' claws. All right. All right, Hasbro, you are, uh, you're doing some things right. And I'm liking it. Some things could still get some work on, but the improvements have been vast and numerous. And I, as a fan, am grateful. Now, a weird thing is, he does have these sculpted on boots, and as we've mentioned before, I believe it was last week, uh, even with the sculpted on boots, he doesn't have a boot cut. 
that perplexes me. Uh, he does have the rocker ankles, and they've got a great deal of articulation. He also can go this far forward with his boot and can go pretty much on point backward. Uh, so that's impressive looking. I'm fairly positive that his lower half is a reuse of the Punisher mold because once again we have those sculpted bottoms of his boots. Um, I'm really happy with this figure. And later on, I don't know if it'll be on the stream today or if it'll be on my Twitter later on, uh, I'm actually going to do a side-by-side -side of him along with the other Killmonger figures that we've received. Uh, both the unmasked one from him and Everett Ross's two-pack and the original one as we see right here. Uh, which I really want to do a side-by-side -side with all three of them as they are all very different figures. Even though one is almost a straight remold, it's still a very different figure. Um, if you were a fan of this costume of Killmonger's, I'm not going to lie to you. Grab it. It's really good. It looks nice. It looks amazing. It... It is everything I wanted to see from this outfit and oh so much more. And that's saying something. Uh, I know I was foaming at the mouth wanting to get a tactical armor Killmonger when I first saw him in the movie. I was really hoping they were going to do a, another legend of him in this outfit. And when I heard they were doing a two-pack of him and Ross, I was really hoping it was going to be this figure and the Everett Ross on the chameleon body. Uh, we didn't get that, and I was really heartbroken. But now that we've gotten this figure, I'm really happy. All right, are we back? Oh, there we go. As I was saying, that was really weird. What would the Black Panther wave be without the Black Panther? Well, I'll tell you what it would be later on, because we'll have him then. In the meantime, we have T'Chaka, the original Black Panther, and T'Challa's father. We saw this figure, or this uh, costume, at the very beginning of the Black Panther movie, when uh, he talked to a very, very young Forrest Whitaker, and the man that would, spoiler alert, turn out to be Killmonger's father. Now, once again, for the packaging, we've got the artistic rendering of a character that we've seen in real life. Uh, we've got the Backing here, which is the exact same amongst all the figures today. Inside, uh, we don't have a whole lot of accessories here. We only have a wave, a leg, not a wave, a leg of Umbaku, and of course, T'Chaka himself. Um, now, personally, I'm a little bit upset that we didn't get a unmasked head for T'Chaka. That being said, 
We've got so many. I did indeed say hi, Red Eric. I just apparently didn't have a microphone. Huh? It was weird. Anywho. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, hashtag streamer problems. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get an unmasked head for T'Chaka. That being said, we have so many extra T'Challa heads between this wave and the original wave, plus the Civil War wave, uh, that I'll find a head that doesn't quite look like Chadwick Boseman, but looks more like uh, T'Chaka, and put that on him with him holding the uh, panther head to better emulate that original scene. Now, something I'm noticing here... Oh, actually it is. Uh, all right. Interesting enough. Uh, the wrap he's wearing, I'm not sure if it's a dashiki or not. I know that it's a tribal wrap that he's wearing. Um, actually comes off completely. You can see it's not quite a straight remold, uh, which is actually a rather nice thing. I was fearing that they were going to do just a straight-up remold that we've seen before of either the Black Panther or the Black Leopard. Um, but actually, it's a little bit different. I know that some of these parts are definitely reused, but not all of them. Um, it's not all straight reuse, and that actually really makes me happy. Um, the detailing on his wrap here is wonderful, and the whole thing looks great. Uh, I'm definitely going to display him with that on, because it just looks so good. Uh, but it's still interesting to know that it indeed comes off. <laughs> Hashtag streamer struggle, I like that one. It's got alliteration. As a comic book fan, we know how much of a fan of alliteration I am. And onomatopoeia. But that's another story for another day. So, what do we always do here on the channel? We look at our articulation. So, for his head articulation, um, he can look down decently. Not sure he can look down quite as well as Killmonger could, but fairly, fairly well. He can look up incredibly well, though. Um, that actually looks great. For his arm articulation, e we can just barely get to 90 degrees, and it doesn't even quite hit the full 90. Ouch. Uh, he does have the bicep swivels, and a really odd texturing on the biceps. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just kind of an odd texture. Uh, we do have the double-jointed elbows here. Eek, look at that articulation. We are not even getting to 90 degrees. And that's that's here. He cannot do the touchdown. He, he can barely even... He can't even scratch the back of his own neck. And this man is the Black Panther. We need to be able to see him flex. Give us, give us that good... No, we're we're getting we're getting this out of him. E. Now I do think that's partially due to the sculpt here on his arm and making him a little bit too swole, and the forearm articulation here being limited by the unique uh, molding that they've done for his particular gauntlets. Uh, he does have, of course, the wrist articulation, but it's just the simple in and out, and, of course, the wrist cut. Uh, the hands are a straight reuse. I believe they're a reuse from Killmonger, though they might be a reuse from T'Challa, because uh, we've seen that claw grip several times. Now, granted, if I wanted to make him absolutely murder Killmonger's father, that would be the look I'd want his hands to be in. Uh, if I want him to be holding his helmet possibly as well um but maybe a relaxed hand would have been nice uh, we'll see if i've got an extra one that i can hand swap with and kind of try and go with that he does indeed have an ab crunch 
Not that we can really see it under his wrap, but it still works even with the wrap on. And he can bend over actually very far, even with his tribal wrap. Cover me impressed. As far as going backwards, ho ho ho! Any and all articulation he lacks in his arms, he makes up for in his waist. Ladies, he will bend over backwards for you, unlike Killmonger. He, of course, does have the waist swivel here. For his hips, and I know this wrap is going to get in the way with this. I can already tell that was going to happen. So, if we undo his... Oh. Oh, that is unfortunate. That's as far as the legs go, even with the uh, wrap undone. Oh. Oh. Well, then. <laughs> I see. Uh, it's not the worst leg articulation I've seen. He's definitely not Typhoid Mary. <laughs> How unfortunate indeed. Uh, he does have, of course, the thigh cut. He also has the double-jointed knees. Which can go back somewhat. Um, eesh, I'm not going to lie to you, man. That's not good for a knee replacement patient. That's yikes. That could definitely be a little bit better. Um, that being said, I do like that, amazingly, even his pants... Oh, no, it played. I, I most certainly heard it. <laughs> I like that even his pants aren't a straight mold reuse when they very well could have cheaped out. Um, and they didn't, which I'm very happy with. Amazingly, of the figures we've reviewed today, he does have a boot cut. Uh, I'm happy about it. I'm just kind of surprised. We get Killmonger wearing boots, and he doesn't have a boot cut. We get T'Chaka wearing boots. Yep, boot cut. Okay. Another neat thing with this, in addition to his articulation where his foot goes back a fair degree and actually forward a great degree, plus, of course, he does have the rocker ankles. But a neat thing is if you look closely at the articulation here and the sculpt, uh... That's actually a new sculpt even for the shoes. He has almost a tabby style shoe here. It's it's something we haven't seen in any other Marvel Legend. I figured T'Chaka was going to be a lazy mold reuse. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I figured he was going to be a very lazy mold reuse to just cash in and add another figure to the wave. But he's got enough unique pieces on him. These unique shoes... Uh, the unique wrap, the unique lower legs. Um, he's actually got a lot of very unique pieces to him. My first impression of him was 100% wrong, and I will be the first to admit it. I will admit I was wrong. I know, I know. Alert the media. I was wrong. And I'm admitting it. <laughs> but I'm really happy with the job they did. And before we move on, let's start getting this guy to get... Oh, ho, ho. Mm. He's going to be a hefty fellow when he's all together. So, we've gotten the totally main villain. Totally main villain of the series. Or the movie, rather. With Ulysses Claw. We've gotten the actual main villain of the series with Killmonger. We've gotten Papa Panther. Now, let's go back in time. Here we have T'Challa, the Black Panther, in the outfit that we saw him in in the first act of the movie. Uh, this is very similar to his Civil War outfit. I believe it is a straight mold reuse of the Civil War outfit, in fact. Um, on the back, we once again have... Hello? Hello? Hi there, camera. Yeah, focus on me. On the back, we once again have the 
stylized artistic rendition of uh, the costume from the movie, uh, all of the other figures in the wave. Inside of here, we of course have the window pane on the front. Oh, cameras these days, indeed. Uh, in that window pane, we can see that we have the Civil War suit for T'Challa. Uh, we have an arm over here for Umbaku, and we have an unmasked head for Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> Camera, my eyes are up here. Thank you. It's made its choice. And inside of the case, once again, our backing isn't changing up this time. It's just going to be this Black Panther backing. We finally have an arm for our Mbaku. Stay. Alright, now I might actually be wrong here. Or they might have just redone these and reused it as much as they could uh, for this new wave. Well, since it's not as though I brought all my MCU Black Panthers up so I can do comparisons. No, I don't believe those are the tabby feet from this version. So... No, it looks as though those are brand new uh, tabby shoes that they did, but they did use them both on T'Challa and T'Chaka. Uh, they both got the new tabby shoes. Um, that being said, it still looks really good. So, we have the Civil War suit, the Act 1 suit of the Black Panther. Uh, it feels like it's a straight-up mold reuse from the Civil War suit. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't buy into that suit at the time, as I might like the Black Panther, and I do. But as is, I currently have four Black Panthers. That's a few too many Panthers. Uh, it's not that I don't like the character. I do. I really do. I don't like having four of any character. I don't like having two of any character. Who are we kidding? And the fact that they keep on putting out more and more of the same figures just with a slightly different costume is a little irksome. <laughs> of course, we'll see me change my tune next week with the... You can never have too many Panthers. Uh, we'll see me change my tune next week when we do the Captain Marvel wave unboxing as I've already got two Captain Marvels, and I'm looking to buy another one or two. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Into the articulation on our figure here. For our neck articulation, he can look down decently, and he can look up fairly well. Um, I'm not 100% sure that he can be riding on top of a BMW with that look, but... It, it's fairly good. Or chasing after Bucky through the streets of... Where did the UN Summit take place? I want to say New York. Civil War. Anyway. For our arm articulation. E, I might know where Papa Panther got it from. That's a bad T-pose, buddy. That's a Bethesda T-pose. Eesh. He can't even get to the full 90 degrees, much less do the touchdown. Yes, Retro. I mean Black Panther action figures. <laughs> anyway. We also have the bicep swivel here. The double-jointed articulation in his arm, which, again, Hasbro... The Black Panther is only going to hear? Eee! Let our man flex! 
Let our man flex, please. Uh, he does have these silver tips on his claws, unlike with his father's figure. Um, who doesn't have any coloration on his claws. Even though I know he had gold tips in the movie, which is how Baby Killmonger found out that it was the Black Panther that killed killed his pops. Uh, he does also have the wrist articulation, but it is the standard in and out. And actually, it's hindered a little bit on this side going in because of the cuff on his costume's wrist. Uh, he does also have a waist articulation and can go a great deal forward with it. It gives him a weird hunch in his back, but he can go a great deal forward and he, once again, will bend over backwards for you ladies. Also, he does have the waist swivel. Um, I'm actually now looking between the two figures. I'm seeing a lot of mold reuse between this figure and the Papa Panther figure I just took a look at. Um, yeah, it was kind of a weird hump. Does that hurt? Does what hurt? That hump. What hump? Anyway, young Frankenstein references aside, for his hip articulation, we're getting some decent articulation here. Not quite what I'd like to see out of the Black Panther. He's a very acrobatic figure. So I'd like to see some better articulation out of him. That being said, it's not horrible. You went Fergie. I went Young Frankenstein. Both excellent. Anyway, he does have the thigh swivel or thigh cut here. It's lovely. Panther lumps? Eh, panther lumps are not lovely. <laughs> no, no. Uh... He does have the double-jointed knee and can actually go fairly far back with it. Uh, he's got a little bit too beefy of a calf here, and his thighs are just a little bit too thick for him to go all the way back. Amazingly, his father has more articulation than he does, as the Black Panther does not have a boot cut. Shuri. Shuri, my girl. We gotta take care of this. How come your pops got a boot cut, and your brother doesn't. Hmm? You're the one that designed the suit. Shame. When I say I brought out all my Black Panther figures for today, probably for posing afterwards, I meant all. Anyway. For our feet. Yes, he does have the rocker ankles, and I'm going to guess he's got the same kind of foot articulation that his pops did, as they do have the same exact feet. Uh, he's got some great forward articulation. Wow, and he can actually go all the way back on point, something even Papa Panther couldn't do because of the lower halves of those pants that he was wearing. Um, I'm gonna level with you guys. If you already have the Civil War figure, I wouldn't bother. Uh, I passed up on the Civil War figure. The only thing that I'll say is that it is a much better likeness of Chadwick Boseman. And here, we'll actually do as we normally do around these parts. Swap the head so that you can see what it looks like with the unmasked head on. Which looks, it looks good. It, it looks, it looks very good. I'll give it that. It looks like Chadwick Boseman did, uh, with that kind of beard that he had. Um, I'm not sure if I prefer that version of his face or this version of his face, though. Honestly, I'll have to take a look and... Whichever version is the one that I don't like as much will probably go on my T'Chaka figure for the unmasked version of T'Chaka. Uh, that being said, as I said before, if you've got the Civil War figure, just stay with that one. 
uh, get your own Baku part offline. It's a good figure. It's not wonderful. Especially since in this very same line of figures, we have another version of T'Challa. This is why I had to say I have four Black Panther figures. Because we have another version of T'Challa here. With the same Chadwick Boseman head. But this one's the vibranium suit with the purple going through it. Guys. I liked the movie. I did. I really truly did. I would have much preferred for this figure to instead of it being... Why did they make so many? Because the movie did much better than they thought. And it's the first superhero movie ever up for Best Picture. So, they got a reason behind it. Uh, on the back, of course, we've got, again, that artistic representation of a costume we've seen in real life. A little bit weird. I'll be honest. And the same background as we've seen on all the others. I'll be dead honest. If they were going to do this wave, were it up to me, would I have done both these versions in the same wave? No, no, I would not. That's too many Panthers. Getting Papa Panther in? That's good. I would have liked to have seen the leader of the Rhino tribe. Uh, I'm trying to remember what his name is. He was the lead star of Get Out. And he played Okoye's husband in the film. I would have preferred to have had a figure of him as one of these two Panthers. Instead of giving me two different versions of Black Panther, give me him. Give me him. Even if he doesn't come with a attack rhino, give me him. He would have been an interesting enough figure to really round out this great series of figures that we've got. Um, I would have much preferred him over getting two Black Panthers. Especially since one is pretty much a straight remold. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm in love with the fact that it's a straight remold of the Civil War suit. Um, especially since this version only came with the unmasked head and an arm for M'Baku. This version came with the arm for M'Baku plus two closed fists, two open fists, and the same head. Why did we get less out of that one and more out of this one? I don't know. So, inside the box for this figure, we have, as we've already seen, the two closed fists, the right arm of M'Baku, whereas the last one was the left arm of M'Baku, and the unmasked Chadwick Boseman head. Now, now I'm really going to cut into that other figure. I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but here's my opinion. Uh, already, just getting this one out of the box... I prefer this figure. And I'll tell you guys why. So, I'll do so well examining the articulation. For his head articulation, we've got the same or better articulation upward and actually better articulation looking downward. Now, what made me automatically like this figure better? Butterfly 
shoulders. In, ath in athletic, acrobatic character like the Black Panther should have butterfly shoulders. He can do this, which almost looks unnatural, but it's not the point. The point is how far back his arms can go. The butterfly shoulders really do make all the difference in the world with his arm articulation. I mean, just to look at that. Look at how he can cross his arms behind his back. That's insane. The other figure that we just got done reviewing can't do that. Because he lacks the butterfly articulation. Meaning he can't put his arms as far forward, nor as far backward, as this figure can. This one can easily grasp things in front of him. And can even go to a greater degree than that because of the butterfly articulation. For a figure like Black Panther or Spider-Man, don't give me a figure without that articulation. I will admit, just like uh, the claw figure before, he's a little bit wobbly as you can see. But that's probably just my particular figure here. Getting into the rest of his arm articulation, for his shoulders, they're only getting to 90 degrees, but at least they're hitting 90. He does have the bicep swivel, but his arms are, again, only getting to just above 90 degrees. We're not getting the flex out of our mans, we're just getting to here. E. I'd, I'd like to see some more articulation here from him. Yeah, it makes it seem like the pieces are going to come apart. It most certainly does. Uh, there is a trick that can be done with Pledge Furniture Polish. Uh, it's a trick that toy fans out there are probably all far too familiar with. But I shouldn't need to use some furniture polish on my figure straight out of the box. Uh, we do have the in and out for his wrist articulation. Uh, it looks to be the same hands that we've seen on both him. Uh, actually, no, they are slightly different hands on the two figures. Uh, as these have those purple dots on there that are not just painted on, they're actually sculpted on. Uh, they might have just smoothed those over for the molding process with him and T'Challa, or T'Chaka, but uh, I actually do prefer the extra molding on these hands. Uh, for his waist articulation, ooh, he actually can't go as far forward, nor as far back as the Civil War outfit one. That's a little strange. Now, it's appearing to be very odd on the camera, but I'm not sure if you guys can tell. The vibranium suit is actually purple with all of, all of the lines here that almost appear blue on the stream are actually a light purple, kind of a violet. Again, cameras. Hashtag streamer struggle. He does have the waist cut there. And can get pretty much the same hip articulation that we've been seeing out of the other figures. He also has the thigh cut here. And the double jointed knees, which can go further back than his compatriot, the Civil War Suit Panther. Uh, and farther back than Papa Panther, T'Chaka. Uh, once again, we're going to have to berate Shuri that, Shuri, your father has boot cuts and your brother doesn't. Shuri, you're supposed to be designing this. I am, I am disappointed. 
you'd expect a boot cut right here by the uh, sculpted on panther claws at his feet, but he does not have that. Uh, additionally, I knew I wasn't crazy. The feet on him, which can go almost fully on point, do not have the tabby feet. Um, so it is a slightly different foot mold between the Black Panther figures that we've received and the Papa Panther slash Civil War Suit Panther. So that is a neat detail to notice. Um, he does have the rocker ankles, and they've got a substantial amount of articulation there. The range is actually fantastic in these rocker ankles. Hasbro, do yourselves a favor. Don't leave yourselves open to this kind of criticism. Don't give us two of the same figure in the same line and have one be that much better articulated than the other. It's not going to work out well for you. Now, a thing of note with this figure is that one, his closed fists do not have the purple on them uh, at all. So you could even switch this out to give your other panthers closed fists. I might actually do that with the Tachaka figure. Um, Especially since, I'll be honest, this fist doesn't look like it was made for this figure. It's got the lines on it, but it almost seems too small. It's a little strange. I'm noticing another thing with uh, this, and this might just be my figure. I might actually need to see if I can get a replacement one. Look at his ears. This ear is actually folded in, whereas this ear comes out. Um, that's... Eesh. That's just not right. But since it did come with a secondary head... And... I'm fairly positive it's the same mold. Actually, it's not. That is strange. You would think that because they released these two at the same time, they'd be the exact same mold. This one actually has a smirk on his face, whereas this one is straight-faced. Huh. That's most unusual. Today has been a whirlwind of surprises. But I mentioned on Twitter that we would also be doing some light modding to help with your army building. Vamp is indeed perplexed. Vamp is confused. It hurt itself in its confusion. So, we've seen the main baddies of our film. We've seen three Panthers. One old, one newer, and one new west. We have one more figure before we get to our build to figure. Our final figure. And our review today is Io of the Dora Milaje plus the Dora Milaje Army Builder. Now, as you can see, this particular figure comes with a spear, a set of rings, the final leg of Umbaku, our Dora Milaje figure, the weird dagger thing, and two extra Dora Milaje heads. Now, there's something you guys need to see with this. Now, additionally, on the back, we've got the 
artistic rendering of the Dora Milaje uh, and the other figures in the wave. Now, the interesting with, thing with this particular figure is that this is a straight mold Greaves. And of course, our backing is the same as we saw before. Now, that's a big claim for me to say, is that this is indeed a straight reuse of a mold. Unless, of course, it was true. Here we have the first wave's Nakia. You'll remember her as being Black Panther's love interest in the movie, and is donning this costume at the end of the movie. Now, the reason why I bring her up, other than the fact that she came with two rings, a spear, the weird knife thing, and the torso of Okoye, is the fact that these figures literally come with the same exact accessories. Okay, so they just reuse the accessories. Well, I wish I could say it was just the accessories that were reused here. However, this might not be a bad thing. I'll explain in a moment. This is your Black Panther 1 Nakia figure. This is your Black Panther Wave 2 Dora Milaje figure. Notice anything in particular? It is literally the exact same mold between the two figures. The shoulder armor is the same. The neck pieces are the same. The other side's shoulder armor is the same. The wrist guards, while being colored differently, are the same. Even the middle rings on the lower legs are the same. The difference is exactly are in the color details. The legs are the exact same mold, but this one has extra paint on them. Plus they're a darker color plastic. These ones are a lighter color plastic without the extra paint. The front flaps here, this one only has a very light gold wash. This one has all the details highlighted. On the back, this one doesn't even have a gold wash on that same back sash, whereas this one does. This is a literal straight mold reuse. So, why in the world would you ever want to get this figure other than for your Umbaku leg? Well, I'm very glad you asked. So, remember, I said one of the key features with this particular figure was that it came with not just the head on its body, not just the one extra head, but that it came with three unique heads. Two extra and one on. All right, that's great, but it only has one body. Well, here's the thing. As we speak, 
Nakia is clogging up the shelves of your local stores, Walmarts, Targets, etc. And you can get her on clearance. I got... <laughs> she just beheaded the other two. Funny, but... I bought two extra Nakias for $5 each. For a quarter of the price of a Marvel Legends, I bought two extra Nakias. Now, Vamp, why would you go do that? There was only one Nakia in the film. Why would you ever want three of the same girl? I think you know where I'm going with this. I told you all there would be a little bit of modding today. And I wasn't joking. So, if you are like me, the Dora Milaje is put out here to be what they call an army builder. Dora Milaje aren't best in singles, they're best in groups. Just like AIM soldiers, Hydra agents, and the like. Thus, you could have one Dora Milaje and then buy two more to bulk up your ranks. You very well could. Or, for a quarter of the price, you can go to your local GameStop who has 50% off of clearance collectibles and all the original Black Panther Legends are clearance collectibles. You can go to your local Walmart or your local Target. Because I know Target is having a huge sale on clearance action figures. Of which the Black Panther Wave ones, at least at every Target I've been to, are clearance action figures. Now, you very well could go and spend yourself $60 on three Dora Milages. You could. That's your own choice. However, you can also do, as I've been doing, while telling you guys these fun science facts, and just start doing head swaps. Because in the time that it's taken me to tell you these fun science facts about the characters, I've already had swapped two extra Dora Milaje heads onto previous Nakia figures. Now, before I do it with the final one for uniformity, just to make everything absolutely uniform between all of them, let's do our articulation test. We've got actually absolutely fantastic upward neck articulation. Oh, because the head came off. Hmm. We've got wonderful downward neck articulation. For our shoulder articulation, the armor up here interferes a little bit, but she can at least get to 90 degrees. This one is, this side is coming down a little bit, but it's not horrific. She does not have bicep cuts, as it is a female figure, and Hasbro still hasn't fixed that issue of bicep swivels and double-jointed elbows on their female figures. Seriously, Hasbro, get on this. Single-jointed elbows, so can only go to here. Can't get your girl flexing. She does have the in-and-out articulation on the wrist. Uh, she does not have a ab crunch, but she does have the ab swivel, as we again see on all of the female figures, because they need to have different articulation for reasons. Meaning she can swivel side to side. Can go, actually, a fair amount forward, and... Fellas, she will bend over backwards for you. So, alright. 
or ladies, we don't judge here. Anyway, she does not have a waist cut though, so you are not going to get that waist cut movement here. Uh, for her leg articulation, wow, that is the best leg articulation we've seen today. Additionally, she does have the thigh cut. And the double jointed knee so that it can go a decent way back. It can't go all the way back, but it can go a decent way back. She does have the rocker ankles, thankfully. And can go a decent way forward with her ankle. And can go almost back on point backwards. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way... Let's do our final head swap. So, the reason I was telling you about going to your local Walmart, Target, or GameStop and picking up those Nakia figures for next to nothing is, one, it will make it so that they get more Marvel Legend figures by you getting rid of their old stock, and two... For $5 a figure, you can army build an entire set of Dora Milaje. Now, for the actual one Dora Milaje figure we had, she is now our Nakia. Because she has the extra paint here on the front and on her thighs. Uh, she does not have the same dark color to the armor on her. Uh, the armor is a little bit lighter, but she stands out because she's a different character. Now, for the price, would I rather get one Dora Milaje figure with three heads and need to get two more of these for $60, or... Get one $20 Dora Milaje and three $5 Nakias. You and I both know that answer. Instead of paying $60 for this, you can pay $35 for all of this. It's simple math. And it will make it so that you don't have six or yes, six extra heads lying around for your Dora Milaje figures. Just two extra Nakias. I'd much rather have two extra Nakia heads versus six extra Dora Milaje heads and still get an entire army to go around the king. Simple math. I know that you're not the biggest fan of math, Retro, but between the two, I know what I'm spending my money on. Plus, and I'm not saying, but I am saying, you could also take that extra torso that you just got three of for Okoye. One, you could get the entirety of Okoye, which would make a very nice addition to your Dora Milaje. Or you could take the two extras that you're not going to make the one Okoye out of and sell them. The torso alone goes for between eight and ten dollars on eBay. I just told you the figures are five bucks. I'm not suggesting that you go on to eBay with these figures, but I'm outright telling you, yeah, just sell the extra torsos on eBay. Someone might be looking for them that can't find them locally and wants to get Okoye after her amazing performance in Infinity War. Plus, you'll now have a... One. Two. Three. Four. Five member squad of Dora Milaje. That's how you army build without breaking the bank. 
Now, granted, you do need to get the other figures for Okoye in order to make your full Okoye figure, but by my math, you're still coming out ahead. Definitely something I would say to look into. Especially if, like me, you want an army for your king. Finally, we have gone over our main villain and our true villain. We have gone over straight mold reuses. We've gone over too many panthers. So it looks like it's time for our build to figure. The whole reason for our title, for our tweet, for all of it is our build to figure for today is Umbaku. Now guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is glorious. I have been wanting a figure of this absolutely beautiful mountain of a man since I first saw him in the movie. This is amazing. I love everything that they've done with this figure and I could not be happier. It is a glorious build to figure. If you're an MCU fan and if you liked Black Panther, it already looks fantastic and we haven't even gotten into our articulation. Now, one negative thing I will say, his neck is slunched it's hunched pretty far forward. Now, I don't think it's actually hunched far forward. And when you take off his cloak here, he's got a little bit of a slouch, but not an immense one. The, the cloak here really, really makes that hunch look, um, look really bad. He, he looks like he's slouching something fierce. Now, I said I'd get into this when we got to the review. Our weapon. Our staff slash club. I wish they did something more with this. As it is, it is just a straight smooth piece of plastic. It's got a bulb here, it's got a little bit thinner part here, and it tapers down. I really wish that we got more with this than just what you see here. I mean, it's smooth as the day it was born. A little bit of texturing on this would have gone a very long way. That being said, let's look at what we always look at here articulation good heavens i don't know how much articulation we're going to get out of him because of all of these layers but darn if they don't look good for his neck articulation he can look down at the village of those that spit in tradition he can look up to the sky with hope of being the new king. For his arm articulation. <laughs> I thought it was going really well. And then his sh arm just came out of its socket. <laughs> uh, build to figure problems. Anyway. His arms actually only go up to about here and that's with me forcing it into a position that I'm not really comfortable with. Uh, that is because of the shoulder armor up here um, rubbing a little bit too much. Uh, he does not he does not have bicep cuts. That's very unusual. There are cuts in his biceps here. As you can see here, there is a cut in the bicep. But it's not articulated. It's just a cut. I'm very sorry that you cannot see me or hear me, Mama Fluffer. 
uh, I would say to refresh the stream. He does have the double jointed elbows and wow, he actually has better arm articulation than the Panthers. Well, for that alone, make him the king. Uh, because he can't quite get all the way to a flex, but he can get more of a flex than the Black Panther can with his 90 degree arm. He can at least get to a nice 45 degree. He can't quite flex all the way, but he does have quite the furry gauntlet here. Yeah, with the, uh, with the arm gauntlets here, I'm surprised that he can flex more than Black Panther, who doesn't have this beautiful fur on the gauntlets. And yeah, Mama Fluffer, again, I'd say just refresh the stream, because there's nothing I can do to help you out on my end. He does have wrist articulation, and he can go in the 90 degrees, however... Remember those big, beautiful gauntlets? Yeah, he's he's only going that far out. Uh, the gauntlet here rubs against the back of his hand, and he cannot go any further back. Now again, the weird part to me. We have someone who uses a club. Much like someone who uses a sword. Or someone who uses a spear. You would expect their wrist to be up and down like this. But the only one in this wave who has that is Ulysses Claw, who uses a gun. <sighs> Hasbro, I love you guys, but you frustrate the bejesus out of me sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. For our waist articulation, which... The new mold down him looks absolutely fantastic, I'll say. It looks great, but we do not have an ab crunch. We only have an ab swivel. Uh, this is what we've been seeing them do a lot with the Marvel Legends build to figures where they only have an ab swivel and not an ab crunch. That's as far forward as he's going, and once again, ladies, he is not going to bend over backwards for you. I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, he can go slightly side to side. Actually, a decent way side to side each way. Um, but that is all. Um, now, amazingly, unlike Ulysses Claw and unlike T'Challa or T'Chaka in this same wave, his fur loincloth skirt thing here is not removable. You cannot take it off of him. And this is a very thick piece of rubber. I mean, it's all soft goods, but you can see how thick this piece is. That's not anything thin by any stretch of the words. That is a very thick bit of rubber. And thus, I can already tell you, his hip articulation, that's it. Because <laughs> the rubber pieces get far too much in the way. You're not going to get him to go any more than that. Ladies, you ever wear a really, really tight skirt? That's his problem right now. Bam. That's as far as he's moving his legs. If you want to move any further, you're going to have to take it off. And we're not doing that. This is a family-friendly stream, thank you. I believe he does have a thigh cut. All right. <laughs> that was a question. Does he have a hip cut? He does not have a hip cut. Uh... He does have the double-jointed knees, but they could have put a slit. They could have, they could have done like they did with both Papa Panther and with Ulysses Claw and made it so that it was removable with that slit. Any of these things would have worked, but here we are. Um, it's just a little awkward. Speaking of awkward, there's his knee articulation. Because of this, these rather, because this is one layer. This is another layer of soft goods. There are two layers of soft rubber goods that make up the first skirt of M'Baku. Our man's doesn't have a lot of articulation, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Like, 
you can get him to about 90 degrees. But let me tell you, M'Baku, if you had a knee replacement, that's not good enough. You gotta be working a lot harder to get your knee at a lot better angle than this. And it ain't going. It's just not doing it, buddy. Additionally, amazingly, he's got these wonderful fur boots and no boot articulation. You have these beautiful fur boots and you didn't put a cut right here? Come on. Has bro. Has bro. Bro. <sighs> Moving on. He does have the rocker ankles, amazingly enough. And they've got some articulation to him. It's not great, but it's serviceable. That's as far forward as his foot is going. And he can almost get all the way on point. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Is his articulation fantastic? No, no it is not. It is far from fantastic. Could I reasonably put Umbaku in a fight against the Black Panther with this kind of articulation? Not really. I don't even know if I could have him sit on his own throne because of the fact that, well, he does have the hip articulation to get his legs forward. That's as far forward as they're going to go. I mean... One of the most famous scenes in the movie is him sitting on his throne when the Queen, Shuri, and Nakia come in to seek asylum, and this is as close to sitting as I can get him. You would think the very least we could get is a decent sitting... Oh, I forgot Ross was there too. You would think we could at least get a decent sitting pose out of our man. And that's all we can get. That all being said. We've got so much unique molding on this figure. The face looks... Pretty much photo accurate to Umbaku's actor. I still say, if you are a big fan of Black Panther, if you're a big fan of Infinity War, if you're just a big fan of Umbaku, I'd still pick him up. Even if you don't want three more Black Panthers. I can't say I blame you there. Get their parts online. I suggest the Ulysses Claw figure, and of course... This tactical armor killmonger who just looks fantastic. But honestly, if you can get Umbaku online on eBay for 60 bucks, I'd go 60 bucks on him. Because that's the price of getting the three extra Black Panthers that you may or may not want. Uh, I definitely do recommend getting one of the Dora Milaje and just get three extra Nakias so that you can make yourself a nice army of Dora Milaje. I recommend the Dora Milaje figure. I recommend the Tactical Armor Killmonger figure. If you're a big fan of Ulysses Claw like I was, grab him. Um, the panther figures himself, amazingly for being a Black Panther wave, the only one I really recommend is the Vibranium Suit Panther. And that is because of his inclusion of the butterfly arms. Uh, and the extra Chadwick Boseman head. If you already have the original Black Panther from Black Panther, or the... Civil War suit Black Panther. Don't even bother with him. And unless you're an uh, absolute maniac like I am and you really want T'Chaka because you thought he was a great character and you thought it was cool that they had this version of him in the beginning, 
if it weren't me being me, I probably wouldn't get him. That being said, I actually like him better than I like the standard Black Panther suit. Um, but yeah, if you're not getting all of the figures, I do recommend the Umbaku build to figure. He is wonderful. He He's a genuinely good figure. It makes me really happy that we got a figure of this big old behemoth of a man. He genuinely makes me happy here. So, my recommendation, yes, Umbaku. Heck yes, Tactical Suit Killmonger. If you want him, we had a claw. No more than one Dora Milaje. Honestly, just get one getting Nakia's after that. Vibranium suit? Yeah. Civil War suit? Pass. And T'Chaka? If you want. All in all, it was a decent wave. I'm not going to say it was great. I'm not going to lie to you guys and tell you that this is my favorite wave of Marvel. No, it's not. It's not. We had some great waves at the end of 2018, and 2019 is shaping up to be even better. Speaking of 2019, as we're getting ready to wrap this thing up today, so, next week we will be doing the Captain Marvel wave of Marvel Legends. It is the Cree Century build to figure uh, two of the characters are comic book figures. All of the rest are MCU figures. Uh, so we've got five MCU figures that we're going to be going over next week and two comic book figures. Um, plus the Kree Sentry is, of course, a comic book-based figure uh, for the build to figure. After that, as long as I get my last one in, fingers crossed, uh, we've got the Kingpin build to figure wave. Uh, and that looks like it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Fingers crossed that I'm not going to be disappointed because I already have a couple reservations about a few of the figures. Hopefully they're going to surprise me. Hopefully I'm going to be surprised with some of these figures. Some of them I'm already super hyped about. Some of them, uh, we'll see what we see. Uh, finally, they are now up for pre-order. We're not sure when they're coming out, but we know it's going to be soon-ish. Uh, we will when they come out, have the Caliban wave of X-Men Legends. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one. It has a new Beast figure. Uh, the first time we've gotten an actual Marvel Legends of Blink, who I'm a huge fan of from the Age of Apocalypse series. Uh, the first Gambit figure that we've gotten in over a decade, which, that's surprising. A Weapon X figure, which looks really good. Uh, a new Forge figure, which we'll compare with the old Forge figure. And a, uh, a new Jubilee, who's actually released to the masses instead of being a build figure. So, And she's based off the classic look instead of the modern look, so good with that. Uh, and finally, it comes with Skullbreaker and two extra heads for you to make uh, other Ravagers with. Which, we'll see what we see with that when we get them. In the meantime, something to look forward to. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you guys oh so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to have to take a bunch of photos of these guys because there's a lot of, there's a whole lot of Black Panther figures here. Uh... I mean, just looking in front of me, there's 4, 7, 10, 12, 14, 16 Black Panther MCU figures. That's a lot of MCU figures for one movie. And none of them are Iron Man. Shouldn't be that surprising of a thing, but Hasbro doesn't know how to make a wave without Iron Man. We saw that from the first wave of Black Panther figures, who still had Iron Man in it. It was a comic book one, but still. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Uh, have an absolutely fantastic day. 
In the meantime, let's see who we're going to raid today. Yeah. Yes. Are you looking for Oasis members? Yes. Really? Oh, three. Deborah's playing Elder Scrolls. I um, see that. Zap is playing, he's doing a podcast. T Sparkle is playing Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 remix. Really? Yeah. T Sparkle one, is playing Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. T Sparkle 99. I was going to say, T Sparkle, I amazingly don't have on my list yet. He's, he's new, so you know, I don't think he would have seen him anyway. All right. Well then, guys, we're going to raid, and it's just... Letter T, Sparkle, and Knight. We are going to raid T, Sparkle, 99. He is a new member of the Oasis. Make sure that you send him lots of love. Send him all of the emotes. Um, what do I want you guys to spam him with? Um... If you've got your own emote or you've got Retro Vixen's emote, spam that. Otherwise, spam them with the Aquaman Trident. Let's let's get some Aquaman Trident up in here. Aquaman, Aquaman Trident. I'm, I'm going Aquaman Trident. Let's let's spam with the Aquaman Trident. Let him know exactly what's uh, going on. So, thank you guys ever so much for joining us. Make sure that you tune in next week when we will be doing that. Uh, unboxing for the Captain Marvel build, def the Captain Marvel Cree Century build to figure wave. In the meantime, thank you so much, everyone. Have a fantastic week. Remember, keep it nerdy.